Uh, somebody who watched it all, we pay him to watch. Jason Chaffetz, Fox News contributor, former Republican congressman, and the former chair of the House Oversight Committee. He joins us right now. So, Jason, what did you make of uh, Griff's report that it sounds like two articles of impeachment will be unveiled later today based on what we have heard so far? Isn't that stunning that here we are uh, uh, on this Tuesday morning? We don't exactly know what the impeachment's going to be. Yeah. But they're going to supposedly, by the end of the week, start marking it up. I mean, and yesterday, what a debacle when you have members of Congress and staff asking staff questions. <laughs> hey, by right. the way, you know, I'm going to write your performance review. Uh, let me ask you a question about your impression <laughs> on impeachment. I mean, right. come on. That doesn't pass even. I mean, you wouldn't do that in third grade. And this is the United States Congress run by Jerry Nadler and Nancy Pelosi. What a joke. Well, that's one of the reasons people hate Washington. You know, when you yeah. saw the guy was a witness at one point, next thing you know, and apparently it was revealed right. later that he was a donor as well. What, but when you look at what they've got to do, they've got to attract the moderate Democrats to uh, be uh, favorable to voting for obstruction and things like that. Can they do it? Well, I think their poll numbers are subsiding. I mean, they, they are in decline. The Nancy Pelosi that I saw up close and personal for eight and a half years, she isn't doing anything without a pollster and a focus group. And I think those numbers are coming down so fast. I think uh, Congressman Collins was spot on. It's about speed and it's about getting through the calendar as fast as possible. Uh, I, I think it's just a distraction. They haven't been doing the USMCA. And I know, Brian, you're convinced it's going to be done Tuesday. by the end of the year. Maybe. Tuesday. No, it was I Tuesday hope. in Mexico. City, big guy. I hope. I, I hope you're right. Big but look guy. at all the things that He's we're tall. not doing. I mean, I, I yeah. think Congressman Gates had some of the best questions and made the, one of the best points yesterday about the opportunity cost of all the things that they're not doing instead of this charade in trying to so, impeach Jason, the president. Jason, what's, what's interesting is that remember when they kept saying bribery? If first they said quid mm -hmm. pro quo. Because of a focus group. Because of a focus group who said yeah. that's not resonating. You need to go with bribery. But that's not one of the charges. But watch this flashback of them um, accusing the president of bribery. The devastating testimony corroborated evidence of bribery. It goes right to the heart of the issue of bribery. This is a very strong case of bribery. It's bribery. You can call this extortion, you can call it bribery. It's all the same thing. There might even be bribery. 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 It's bribery. So, so it's not supposedly in the first two articles of impeachment, obstruction of Congress and abuse of power. No bribery. I, I don't know what it is. We still don't know definitively. Got to wait for the press conference and have Nancy Pelosi, you know, kind of put her finger to the wind and say, yeah, it smells like do this today. A, do they have a case on obstruction of Congress because they're mad at him for blocking no. aides from, from um, sure participating enough. in the impeachment proceedings and then abuse of power because they say he pressured the Ukrainian president? No, I don't think. Oh, look, the president put out the transcript. You can read it for yourself. I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, as it relates, I think Congress or uh, Attorney uh, uh, Turley, uh, Professor Turley, put that out there very clearly. Just because you want to go to the courts, you disagree with a subpoena being issued, does not mean that you're obstructing Congress. I sat there for eight and a half years. I was the chairman of the Oversight Committee for two and a half years, and I got to tell you, the Obama administration obstructed us every single day in terms of witnesses and documents. It is a daily right. occurrence and it happened in democratic administrations as well uh and, and it's it's a joke it's just Jason, real quick, not evidence there real quick i just want to just get your take on a theory out there that nancy pelosi being that she's a political chess player might say i am going to wait on actually pushing this forward until i get a court to decide whether mulvaney pompeo and uh bolton. and others uh and bolton are forced to testify is that do you think do you see that happening I don't, I don't think that it is questionable as to whether or not they can win this vote. Uh, they have pushed this down into a cul-de-sac where there is the, almost a point of no return. But if they can blame somebody else, like the courts, yep. maybe that's the way that she can get we'll out see. of this. I All can right. see that scenario. You know Interesting. What, you know what? I, you know, reading that, the IG report yesterday, it yeah. is unbelievable. There were 17 yeah. inaccuracies or omissions when they presented their case to the FISA Convenient. court. Some of them, like, they never told the FISA court judge 
judges uh, who paid for the dossier. That was Hillary Clinton's campaign and the DNC. They never told the FISA court that Steele had lied in the past and had, quote, poor judgment. They never told Steele's primary source was a boaster and known to embellish and later cast doubt on the dossier. They never told the judges that Steele was uh, desperate, mm. that Trump not get elected, quote. They never told a top FBI lawyer uh, doctored evidence to create a false and negative impression yeah. of Carter Page. I mean, these facts, were they manipulated to mislead the court? I'll add one more thing to Carter Page. Uh, Carter, they never said that Carter Page was working for the CIA. Uh, look, I got to tell you, as somebody who read Inspector General reports for a living for eight, eight plus years, this is God as damning you. as it gets. Remember, there's right. now, this is the fifth report. There's over a thousand pages detailing how the upper echelon of the FBI manipulated for their per personal purposes, for the wrong purposes, how excoriating. I mean, it so was what happens absolutely to those FBI devastating. Agents? What happened? Because I know the judges Nothing. usually sign off on everything 99% of the time because they trust their source, the FBI agent. Well, I think this is what's so infuriating is we haven't seen justice. Now the inspector general has made at least nine referrals to the Department of Justice, but I was very buoyed up. I was very excited that to see uh, Attorney General Barr give his take on it, right. but also the prosecutor, Mr. Durham, indicate that, hey, there's a whole lot more here to come. He's the one that can actually put handcuffs on somebody and make and prosecute somebody, uh, but I, I look forward tomorrow to hear from Horowitz about how bad it was at the Department of Justice and the right. FBI, how they manipulated this data. It was so bad. Well, Chris Ray, the director of the FBI, did say yesterday, yep, uh, we accept the recommendations of the IG and we're going to make changes. But you mentioned uh, John Durham, the, age, uh, the uh, U.S. attorney from Connecticut who's looking into all this stuff. He disagrees with the findings and he says, while our investigation is ongoing, Last month, we advised the inspector general that we do not agree with some of the report's conclusions as the uh, uh, pred uh, predication and how the FBI case was open. And that is because they base so much of the, uh, of the FISA application on the Steele dossier, which they found out later, was just a bunch of made up stuff. And once they realized it, they never said, hey, by the way, judge, that's a bunch of made up stuff. I think it's also an indication that this may expand much further than just the FBI because right. Durham could be looking at the CIA yep. and others. The other thing that just made me nuts about this thing is the, the idea that they did not give defensive briefing, briefings to Donald Trump, the candidate, and to President Trump. They kept that information from right. him. They're supposed to be protecting that person. We give them Secret Service. We give them CIA briefings. And the idea but that Jason, they did there was not no go in and bias. tell is They so said wrong. there was no political bias that they could it. get anybody yeah. to admit to. Yeah. Well, look, we have thousands of texts. You can read it in their own words. The, the one thing that I disagree with Horowitz and I look at it is, how could there not be political bias? And why is it that every time something turns, it's always against Donald Trump? Right. It never goes in his well, favor. a couple of things. A couple of things. Uh, they say that after those uh, emails were hacked and released by John Podesta, a couple of days later, Ambassador Downer shows up uh, from Australia and says, you know, I heard this thing in the spring from this guy, George Papadopoulos, about, uh, about the emails in Russia and the Trump campaign, and that helps launch this whole investigation. And they eye four people, Flynn, Papadopoulos, Manafort, and Carter Page. But at that time, this is the key moment, Bill Priestep says, I don't think I should give a defensive briefing because I don't want to tip off a potential Russian uh, infiltration. Now, if you're Bill Priestep and you have Chris Christie and Rudy Giuliani in on the roster for Donald Trump, two people with impeccable recommendations with the Department of Justice, why wouldn't you call them in and then say, this is the deal? Then you call in the candidate Trump, and this whole thing could have stopped in July. It seems to me, even though I've never conducted an investigation like this, this is basic human logic. They should have gone to Donald Trump one on one and explained the situation. He is the candidate. We protect that person. I think Donald Trump would have looked at him and say, I don't know who George Papadopoulos is. I, I don't know once. Carter Page. I don't even know who they are. So get them the hell out of here. I think that could have solved a lot of problems. They All did that for Dianne Feinstein when they had a Chinese national sitting next right. to her. And they treated Hillary Clinton totally different. I think they had it in for Donald Trump. 
And I just think no, they wanted to I, go I think after different, him, Jason. even after he was sworn in. I think that they believe that Donald Trump and Russia were colluding, and they, they just are refusing to say that. Because yeah. to say Papadopoulos, who Donald Trump met once, Carter Page, who he never met, Michael yeah. Flynn, who's got this incredible record, who rips Russia in his book, never would see it. This guy just gave his country for the best years of his life, 31 years, to think that he is going to be a Russian agent. And then Paul Manafort got fired the day the Ukrainian story was in the New York Times. He would have gotten rid of him. This whole thing would have been done. We would have had no problems. That's right. And, and that's what I said. Every single time they had these opportunities, they went outside their normal protocol. They did not act the way they should. And now after a thousand pages of reports from the inspector general, it's time for Durham and Barr to actually charge some people because you can't go in and manipulate emails and then present that to the court. And that's the other part. Where is the court in this point? Right. I don't know of any other court in the land where you can lie to them and manipulate them, making 17 serious errors in omission and not have some repercussion. The court needs to stand up for itself as well. Lindsey Graham said last night, this is how uh, J. Edgar Hoover used to operate. Jason. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, there Jason. You go. Thank you.